best table, the newest car, the most influential friends, and is it essential for everyone to know that it's you? What some doctors describe as a uniquely American malady is spreading in psychology. or policies of Oshkosh Community Access Television, the City of Oshkosh, the Oshkosh Cable Television Advisory Commission, or Time Warner Cable. former Oshkosh Mayor and City Councilwoman Mel. We're going to do something a little different on this particular segment of the show. Um, in the past, of course, we've had guests. Um, we're going to try something called Another Viewpoint, and uh, that is where we will offer you our viewpoints on certain issues, uh, whether it's the upcoming election, as uh, one of the things will be that we touch on tonight, um, or other issues that are just going on in the community that affect all of us. Um, so I guess, you know, the first let's thing... Let's dive right in. Let's dive right in. And, uh, you know, before we dive right in and jump <laughs> off the diving board here to dive in, um, you know, we want to hear from, from you folks, too. Right. This this is um, a participatory type program. Obviously, you can't call in. That would be wonderful. But uh, you know, we do want to hear from you. And uh, throughout the show, you'll see the website address, um, the email address. Uh, please feel free to contact us and, and let us know what your thoughts are on things. Uh, we want to hear your viewpoint, and we can share that on another viewpoint. Um, elections are coming up on Tuesday, November fifth. Um, locally, we've got three races uh, for sheriff, right. district attorney, and uh, the 54th Assembly District. We've tried to have most of these guests on the show. Uh, we were not entirely successful in doing that. Um, Some are overly intimidated by us. I find that a little <laughs> difficult to understand. I can't imagine why. Um, in the sheriff's race, we've got Sheriff Mike Brooks, who's, right. who's been um, in elected office as the sheriff. He was elected in 94 and um, took office in 95. Uh, he's the Republican candidate. He's been challenged by one of his own employees, uh, Bob, Bob Hughes, Hughes, who's right. running as the Democratic challenger, of course. Um, Mike was on the show a few weeks back. I thought and, he did um, a good job. I thought I thought Mike did a very good job. I thought that uh, um, the budget is obviously going to be a big issue for mm -hmm. people. Um, they've seen the ballooning in the budgets. Uh, people are very conscious of uh, belt tightening all over. It's very difficult when when families are tightening their belts and they see government kind of exploding. Um, Mike has a unique set of circumstances where, where the jail is being built and uh, recommended by the county board. Uh, Bob Hughes made a good point, though. I mean, uh, in, in the debate with the League of Women Voters, um, Bob had stated that, of course, much of the research uh, into recommend, recommending the jail being built was done by Mike Brooks. Mm -hmm. So um, I think people have to decide, has Mike Brooks been doing a good job? Has Bob Hughes brought up any issues that uh, could potentially unseat him? Mm -hmm. And we also have to remind people that this is the first time that the sheriff will actually be running for a four-year term. four-year term, that's so right. So whom, whomever people pick, um, this is a four-year term, so you better be sure of who you want because they're going to be around for a while. Right, and and I agree. I think that uh, when when Sheriff Brooks was here, I, he explained every single increase in the budget mm -hmm. that he has seen, and he he went back to even try and explain increases that had happened just prior to his taking office. Right. So, my difficulty is, and, and will continue to be, and maybe we can cover this on another show is. Uh, police departments and sheriff departments over time. I mm -hmm. mean, when you're w walking into almost a million dollars, five hundred thousand dollars in overtime, um, either staffing isn't being done correctly, or our routes aren't being set up properly, or somebody's getting preferential treatment for being called in on on uh, detectives' work or what have you. Um, but but that's insane to be paying that kind of money in in overtime. So that would be an interesting show for me. I'd like to see some of that well, so we can well, talk more about it. Sure. And speaking of that, I mean, I, I know from us having been friends as long as we have that when you served on the council, one of your <laughs> biggest complaints was, was with respect to the city police department and how the overtime um, 
it's it's the officers with the most seniority Correct. who are at the highest pay rate mm -hmm. who seem to be the ones who get called in for the overtime a lot. That's how the, that's how the bargaining is done and that is how it, it is set up and it's certainly not advantageous to the taxpayers. And I think that the people in charge, the administration in charge, be it Mike Brooks, Bob Hughes, uh, Chief Erickson, they need to do a better job of explaining that. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't think that that's been done. Certainly not to my satisfaction, but, you know, I'm just one person. <laughs> I'll keep asking. All righty, we will do that. Uh, District Jeez. Attorney's race. Mm -hmm. We've got uh, Democrat Brad Preeby, mm -hmm. who's worked in the District Attorney's Office here in Winnebago County since uh, 1994. For mm -hmm. eight years he's eight been years. there. And he's being um, challenged by the uh, Republican candidate, Bill Lennon. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Lennon has been in the Wapaka County DA's office for the last 16 years. Um, neither one of these guests, um, or n neither one of these candidates, uh, was able to be a guest on the show. And That's uh, unfortunate for them because both of them could use a PR lesson. Um, I think of the two, Brad Preeby is probably the, the most well-spoken mm -hmm. uh, of the two. I think Bill Lennon comes across as kind of weak and, um, and comes across, quite frankly, um, like he's a scaredy cat. I mm -hmm. find it hard to believe that he's going to do a great job in the courtroom. And, and I think that's unfortunate because, you know, I think the thing that bothers me about Bill Lennon is his advertising campaign. I'm coming home. I, I, it reminds me of that song of Tony Orlando. I've come, I'm coming home. I've done my time. I, I don't understand that. Uh, nothing's ever prevented him from coming home before. And uh, although he did since. try, he did try he did in try, '94, and he was defeated. And nothing since. Exactly, nothing since. And I just view this as he he waited until Mr. Jelinski got the blood right. in the water. Right. And for whatever people's personal preference is or opinion is on, on that particular situation, nonetheless, the blood was put in the water, and Mr. Lennon, as far as I'm concerned, waited until that blood was in the water, then became an opportunist. Yeah, I, that was the and word. And entered I was the gonna, race. That was the word I was going to use. And I don't think it's any great secret. I've certainly been an, an outspoken supporter of Edmund Jelinski, um, better known as E.J. Jelinski. Um, I thought what he did was the right thing to do. I think it was a Absolutely. very difficult thing to do. Um, and as I wrote in my letter to the editor, if the right thing to do was the easy thing, we wouldn't be having the problems that we're having in government right now. Um, while Bill Lennon comes across as kind of weak, my point was is that because he's been in Wapaka County and hasn't been back to Winnebago County to serve this constituency or pay taxes, um, it's very difficult to know what kind of job he would do in the courtroom. I mean, we have nothing to base um, what kind of prowess he has in the courtroom. Mm -hmm. um, if, if his debates are any indication, I think that he would be a very weak prosecutor. He certainly doesn't put across a very strong aura at all. Now, contrary to that, I think uh, Brad Preeby is a very well-spoken, very um, you know, I mean, he's very aggressive in his speech. I think he does a very good job. Um, although I did notice that when I closed my eyes during the debate, I could have swore I heard Joe Paulus talking. They talk a very lot similar. alike. Even the inflection in their voices yes. is very similar. Yep. Um, that may just be by virtue of being in the office too long with him. Um, I also don't like the idea of having um, policemen, detectives, uh, certainly the higher administration, being involved in endorsements uh, for either candidate, be mm -hmm. it the sheriff or um, police administration. While I understand that, the, that these uh, district attorneys work very closely with the police department, I also was on the council during the Pagel case. Mm -hmm. um, I was also on the council when there was a lot of um, unhappiness with, with the current DA, Joe Paulus, and preferential treatment for certain uh, detectives who mm -hmm. were sent out on cases at his bequest. I think that that opens you up to uh, very dangerous situations, and, and I think that Brad Preeby could have done a very good job. I think he's ran a very good campaign to this point, and he didn't need that to, to take it over the top. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a very intelligent man, and you can tell that he knows. I've watched him in court. He's very convincing. Um, I don't think he needed it. Well, and, and in seeing the debates, and, and that's the only place that we have had a chance to mm -hmm. see them because neither one uh, bothered getting back to us about being on the show in, in a timely manner. Um, you know, I've seen Mr. Preeby in a courtroom mm -hmm. uh, in my professional life and um, have always thought that he's done a wonderful job. 
Mr. Lennon, I have no idea. I, I, I would like to sometime between now and the election actually go over to Wapaka County. I know he's got a jury trial coming up in a, I believe it's a homicide type case, um, starting the week of the election. It starts the day before the election. I, I would like to be able to get over there and at least see him in action. Hey, a maybe bit. we could take our cameras, let everybody see him. <laughs> Just zoom right in. Yeah. I, I don't know how they'd <laughs> feel about that, but um, you know, I, I guess one of the problems that I have with Mr. Lennon, I've got a few of them with him, but one of the problems that I have is. You know, he spent six, uh, 16 years in Wapaka County and always as an assistant district attorney. Mm -hmm. He has never aspired within that community to become a deputy DA or even run for the DA's position. Right. He tried it once here eight years ago. Um, got defeated and never heard from again. I also resent the fact, um, a as a taxpayer and a constituent in this community, the fact that people seem to think that he should be elected by virtue of the fact that his family has done a lot in this mm -hmm. community. I, I appreciate the fact that his family has done a great deal in the community, but I think that, uh, you know, when you're looking to elect an individual, they should be elected on their merits. What not what their family mm -hmm. has done. It's on what you know, not who you know. And quite frankly, both of them should be quite ashamed of themselves because they're running for a position in Winnebago County and neither one of them live here um, and have not lived here and have not paid taxes here. It's di I, I have, that's always <laughs> going to be a bone of contention for me. I mean, y you, you want the big paying jobs and you want all the accolades and you want all this and you want all that. If these guys are so concerned about Winnebago County by virtue of what they do for a living, come on here and live with us. Mm -hmm. help, help support yeah. the security systems that you're talking about putting into the courthouse. Help pay for them. Sure. You know, so, you know, that, maybe that, you know, probably went out on a limb on that one. Not, why not to vote for somebody for DA just because they don't live in the <laughs> county? But it will, I think it, it's, it's important to let people know that if, who's ever elected will have to become a Winnebago County resident. Right. And, and thank God for that. Um, you know, there's, uh, in the last few weeks, there's been some stuff in the paper about um, Mr. Lennon. You know, Mr. Preby came out and said, well, he won't be prosecuting uh, drug cases. And Mr. Lennon immediately kind of slapped him upside one you know, <laughs> side of his head and down the other because, you know, he said that's absolutely not true. This is mudslinging. Well, you know, I get so sick and tired of people throwing around this word mudslinging. If, if you're saying that, if, if you're attacking someone's work product, mm -hmm. that is not mudslinging because you're running for office because of their work product. Right. Or because you feel you can do a better job. That is not mudslinging. And I think if people are going to sling around the word mudslinging, they need to understand what it truly is. Well, and, and it's a great spin tactic. Sure. I mean, anytime anybody's kind of a weak sister and they don't, they're uncomfortable, <laughs> gee, somebody's actually attacking me, I'll mm -hmm. call it mudslinging and then everybody will get behind me because it's dirty politics. Sure. There's nothing dirty about airing factual information, just like in Joe Paulus' case. Mm -hmm. You know, is it uncomfortable? You bet. Did it happen on work hours? You bet. It's all, when you are in an elected office, you had better make sure that you conduct yourself in a manner that can be held up as an example. And if you can't or you choose not to, then for God's sake, don't run for public office. Do us all a favor. Stay at home. Get a different <laughs> job. But, but don't come whining that people are slinging mud. Right. Well, and, and I think, and, and of course I didn't have a chance to, nor did you, ask Brad Preby this question. But had he been a guest on the show, um, I, I would have asked him where he got that from. But I think where he got that from is um, a newspaper article, if I'm not mistaken, in which... Bill Lennon himself said that he had not been prosecuting drug cases in Wapaka <coughs> County, that he had that they had been handed over to someone else, that because of his prior involvement with drugs, they thought there may be some conflict of conflict interest. Conflict of interest, I, if I remember correctly, yeah. Yeah, and well, I, maybe that's where where Brad Preeby was coming up with this. But all know, of a sudden now Lennon is saying, "Oh, I will aggressively prosecute drug cases." Well. well you know, I guess the, we'll never know the answers to those questions because neither one of them was considerate enough to not only us, but the constituency that we will have viewing this program mm -hmm. to get those across. So rather than lamenting on the two that 
don't didn't have the courtesy. Sure, let's, let's move on. Let's to 54. Move on. 54th Near and assembly. dear to my heart. <laughs> of course, that's 54th Assembly District. We have two candidates there. Um, the incumbent is Republican Greg Underheim. He's been in the assembly. He was first elected in a special election in 1987. Uh, he has been reelected since 1988. Um, hissing at this point would probably be inappropriate. Yeah. <laughs> hissing, booing, we don't want that. <laughs> Hate to have to slap you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh boy. Um, uh, the, um, his challenger, of course, is Jim Genesio. Now, the interesting thing about Underheim is that he has been challenged a lot. <laughs> a lot. He has been challenged. It's like every two years when yeah. his term comes up for re-election. And um, nobody seems to be getting it. I mean, the voters don't seem to be understanding, or maybe they understand and are not making the connection. But Well, this one's so near and dear to your heart that, um, you know, it, Jim Genesio, the Democrat, he is challenging um, Greg Underheim. This is his first time running for mm -hmm. the assembly. He's run for city council. One time that I know for sure, was it twice? I, I know I don't one. Um, yeah, I do too. I, I, I was there kind of a long time. Yeah. <laughs> All the years remember. run together, do they, Mel? It seemed as though um, every time I ran for the city council, I had a full docket of people that came <laughs> after me. I can't. <laughs> It becomes but you came blurry. out on top all the time. Um, I in any event, you know, Mr. Genesio did come on the show. He he spoke with us. He did a wonderful um, job. Very very passionate man about his beliefs and very. Uh, he he impresses me as an individual who is not only passionate but compassionate. Mm -hmm. um, he also impresses me as a person that would be willing regardless of what his own personal viewpoint is on something, to do research, to seek out some answers, to get you the answers, and to, and to try to move your agenda, and when I say your, I mean taxpayers' agendas right. forward, rather than it just being a party line kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's what's happened in the 54th Assembly. Um, there's just been so much party agenda crapola that's been pushed forward and you know you tout in the party line and the Republican platform and the Democrat platform and for me personally I want to know that the person that I put in office has has the fortitude and the concern for me when I call that it's not just going to be put on the back burner because I didn't write the campaign check, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, and I believe Mr. Genesio has proven himself to be that kind of a person. Not special interest, he's not taking PAC money. Um, Greg was another one who didn't feel as though he needed to show up on the show. And quite frankly, um, after running against him, they will tell you as an incumbent not to give airtime to your opponent not to debate and not to come on shows like this because every time that you do that you give the the guy or the gal who's against you who's coming up against you free advertising and but in this particular case Genesio got it anyway he yeah. was he was gracious enough kind enough to come on the show sure and and mr. Underheim could have uh, could have had that same advantage um, shared okay. revenues I, I know is a killer in this race for Mr. Underheim. At least that's how I feel. Well, Mr. Um, Underheim um, would lead you to believe that he is some sort of hero as far as shared revenue goes. Um, he actually was was out and out disingenuous in the, in the debate for the League of Women Voters when um, they talked about, he talked about the fact that with shared revenue, he had he had looked out for the 54th Assembly District by supporting only a hundred million dollar cut well, I'm here to tell you that that simply is not true. Uh, Mr. Underheim supported the Joint Finance Committee's recommendation of a 50% or $500 million cut when it came out of committee and just flat out said, you bet, I'll do it. And there was only one other, there was a Democrat that crossed over and that was Shabilsky, who everybody was so ticked off at because they thought the Democrats would stay solid behind the <laughs> shared revenue. Shabilsky crossed over and that's why he's getting the kind of play he's getting now. Um, but but it's interesting because when I ran against Greg, it was kind of, you know, oh, shared revenue will never be touched. I would never <laughs> do such a thing. Now he's coming out and trying to be a hero because he was only he was willing to cut only $100 million. When in, in fact, that $100 million represents a lot of shared revenue to the mm -hmm. city of Oshkosh. And he, and he also... I think misled people when he talked about mandate relief. 
Oh, it was an out and a lie. And um, I spoke with mayors, and, and we talked with Jean on this show. Um, and Jane, I asked Jane, Jane Van Hy. I, I apologize. Um, who's the county executive? And asked, what, you know, have you ever been alerted to the mandate relief in the budget? Uh, talk to mayors. They said it doesn't exist. It does not exist. There may be a process to which you can actually request mandate relief, but the mandates that actually cost local government money are ADA laws, which is the American Disability Act, um, meet our laws, which is our unions that negotiate their salaries and their benefits. Um, I mean, th these are some of the most expensive state mandates, and I would defy Greg Underheim to say that we're going to do away with ADA <laughs> and meet ARP. I mean, the guy right. didn't have the courage to tell the truth about shared revenue. I'd love to see what he had to say about ADA and, and meet ARP. So, um, well, we've got some other stuff that we want to cover quickly. Yes, you actually well, do. You, you know, it's so interesting because we're, we're talking about all these races. And, and um, as most people know, watching me as a former council member, um, I've never really spared my feelings about a lot of things that gone on, but, but there's a few things that have just really um, frosted my cookies. Um, <laughs> and one of them, of course, is the scandals in Madtown, or mm -hmm. as we affectionately call Madtown, Madison. And one of the things that really bothered me, I'm reading all these newspaper articles and I'm reading magazine articles, and, and the political pundits and the analysts are saying, you know, people are so, so fed up with all the crap that's going on in government and you can't trust your elected officials and they're all a bunch of crooks, that they're just not going to go to the polls. They are just and not going to. And that's unfortunate. Well, and you it know what? It should be just the reverse. I think that's bull. Mm -hmm. I think that this is nothing more than a lot more spin to try to get people to stay away from the polls. I think that if people are really as upset as, as everybody's talking about, they should storm the polls and throw <laughs> these bums out of here. I, I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, we have to as voters, as taxpayers, and you know it's funny because whenever you say taxpayers and voters, people automatically assume that this is one in the same group. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's not. You know, you got your taxpayers, and then you have your taxpayer voters. Right. We should be the same group. Anyone who's paying property taxes should darn well get off your butt, off the couch, and get to those polls. It affects your pocketbook every day. It's not just your pocketbook. It's your kids. It's your parents. These people are fleecing you. They're fleecing you blind, and, and either you're, you don't care, or you're too dumb to figure it out. And if you're too dumb to figure it out, I'm telling you, we're going to have more of the same. And I refuse to believe that we're that dumb. I mean, we're just not going to keep putting these people back in there to insult our intelligence any further. So, But, you know, I want to interject something here, Mel, because I think it's not just property tax or, or property owners who, who and taxpayers who need to be registered voters and actually make the concerted effort to get to the polls. It's everybody. Anyone who is of legal age to vote, which Absolutely. is 18 years of age. You know, people say voting is a, you know, you should exercise your constitutional right to vote. Yes, it's a constitutional right, but it's also a privilege. Yeah. It is a privilege to be able to vote. And every single person who is an elected official makes decisions on a daily basis. Yes. Over and over and over again that affect every one of our lives in, in some small way maybe in a large way, but every decision that they make affects us in one right. way or another to one degree or another. And this is important stuff. And, you know, I know people who, who they just, they're so disgusted with politics, they have no interest in politics, and that's fine, but, you know, it, it's going to come vote. back to haunt you at yeah. some point. Well, you know, they're the same people that will sit around and whine and say, well, this guy's a bum and they don't know what they're talking about. And I, you know, I've watched school board meetings and I watch, I watch council meetings and, you know, I mean, I, I try to stay up on things. And, and it's interesting. You'll see these huge influxes of people when it's an issue that deals with just their neighborhood. Sure. Then you never see them again. Well, do they figure that this stuff isn't good? Like you said, little things, big things. Mm -hmm. I just, I really want to get people <coughs> to understand that this community needs your help. I mean, it's a call to arms, literally, and, I, and I'm not trying to overreact. If you want jobs, if you want businesses in this community, 
if you want money to spend, be able to send your children to school, and actually have some sort of future, and pray tell, actually decide to retire at some point and be able to feed yourself, you need to get off your butt and do something about it. I mean, what do we got to do? We've got people who are... We've got an entire leadership in Madison that's up on felony charges, for God's sake. I mean, if it doesn't happen to you now, if you are not inspired now, you just are never going to be. Um, it was interesting when we're talking about, you know, I'm talking about being able to pay for food and, and, mm -hmm. and drugs and all these other sure. things. It was interesting because I attended a, my first council meeting as a non-representative citizen. <laughs> I have to kind of clarify that a few weeks ago. And the reason was is that the council was actually acting upon a request that was brought forth by John Delantonio, who is a council member, to take $10,500 out of the general fund. And for people who don't know what the general fund is, that is... Um, nest egg money that's set aside by the city in case of a city emergency. And that money is set aside just strictly for those purposes for things that are important <coughs> or an emergency. So John Delantonio had suggested that we take $10,500 out of this general fund. Now this is my favorite part. To buy a twinkling arch <laughs> for Menominee Park. Now for the holiday season. For the holiday season $10,500 for a twinkling arch in Menominee Park. Now, despite the fact that this might be just wonderful to look at, it just seemed a little ridiculous at this particular stage when we are struggling as a city with looming probably double-digit um, increases in our property taxes. Absolutely. We are looking at a state budget that is absolutely disastrous. It's calculated to be a $2.8 billion deficit. And, we're, and, and the elimination of shared revenue, potentially. And we're actually talking about buying a twinkling arch at $10,500. Now, thank God for Paul Esslinger, because Paul had actually said, you know, gee, <laughs> I don't think this is a great idea, but if you're all hell-bent on buying the twinkling arch, could we at least own it instead of giving it sure. away? And so the, the uh, discussion ensued, and, and thankfully, um, it was voted it down, was defeated. but not before Councillor Mark Harris had the opportunity to say what a great idea this was to spend $10,500. It really wasn't that much money. Now, what world do you come from that $10,500 isn't a lot of money for a twinkling arch? Well, it, and you know, the thing is, by comparison standards, when you look at the overall budget that the city is dealing with, right, ten five probably isn't a hell of a lot. But, you know, it all adds up. Well, and, and, and I guess from a pri prioritization standpoint, was this something that was that important that you would take it out of general fund? Mm -hmm. I mean, the whole purpose for general fund is to, number one, make sure that our bond rating is good and solid so we can borrow money for the really important right. things at a, right. a re relatively good rate. But what was really interesting about this, Cheryl, is Mark Harris is telling us that 10-5 isn't really a lot of money and this is a great idea and I think we should do this. In the ensuing week, he appeared on this stage with the United Way people helping to, wanting to make sure that people participated in the food drive for the Boy Scouts because the food pantries are getting hit harder than ever because people can't afford food. I know. I know. Don't understand. And we could go on and on and on. And I'm sorry. And I've got pages and pages. So if you like this segment, <laughs> write to us and tell us because we can do this again. And, and, and we will. We will mm -hmm. because we will share people's views and so forth uh, when they write in. And, uh, and we will do this again, uh, talking about different things that are going on. Thanks an awful lot for joining us. Uh, we hope to see you next time. Check out the website. Feel free to write us with your comments and questions. Um, you know, we want to hear from you. We want you to participate. So feel free to uh, join in. Um, and in the meantime, keep your eye right here on us because we've got our eye on Oshkosh. Take care.